Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today we're going to be talking about how to make a profit from selling cakes from your at-home bakery. Now, please keep in mind, I am only going off of my anecdotal experiences. I am by no means an expert. Tip number one, you want to limit the sizing and flavor of your cakes. Now, remember, you have to tell yourself, you are not a full-scale bakery. You are only one person. Limiting your sizing and flavors is just going to make it easier for you to have those ingredients ready and on hand. It's also going to make it a lot easier for you to only buy 6 inch, 8 inch, and 10 inch pans, for example. Of course, you also want to be able to say yes to your customers when they ask for something super, super special. So just make sure that you charge accordingly. Later on in the video, I'm going to give a more detailed description of how I price my cakes. Tip number two, determine your signature fillings. So much like how I had to scale down on the number of flavors of cakes that I offered, I also had to make sure that I had something that I could work with for my fillings. For myself, I found buttercream really easy to make and you can flavor it several different ways. You just wanna make sure that you limit the number of flavorings for your buttercream as well. So it really just depends on how many extracts you wanna keep on hand. I did not charge anything additional for buttercream fillings. I did charge for any fresh fruit that was used, and what I would do is I would take the cost of the fresh fruit and multiply it times three. I did offer chocolate ganache as well, and this would be considered a luxury flavor because it's a lot more expensive to make, and it's just that extra step that I had to go through. So I would charge anywhere from $15 to $30 for a ganache filling. When you have to say no to a particular filling, just keep reminding yourself you are not a full-scale bakery. And you know what? I often found that if I just said I didn't offer a particular filling, people would choose something else. Tip number three, these are the following things you can buy freely and in excess. You are always going to find uses for cake boxes, cake boards, piping bags, and fondant. It never goes bad. Tip number four, purchase these things with a little bit of caution. Specialty molds, and what I'm talking about are like fondant molds that create flowers or maybe fondant molds that create bow ties. I just think that you might see something that you might think you're going to use, but then don't end up using. So proceed with caution when you buy that. Fondant cutters and cookie cutters. Now, sometimes something might appeal to you, but really your customer base doesn't order it that often. I've heard so many times about people buying things that they thought they were going to use and then didn't end up using. So if what you're looking for is to turn a really nice profit, then you need to make sure that you limit yourself from buying these things. Specialty sprinkle mixes. Now, I know that I love looking at the sprinkle mix itself, but realistically, it's probably easier just to buy the sprinkles individualized and then create your own sprinkle mixes because you never know what somebody's going to be asking for. Tip number five, here are a list of my favorite basic items that you're going to need. A cake turntable, which is crucial if you're going to be covering any of your cakes with buttercream. I've tried to do it without and it's nearly impossible. A metal spatula, which is a must. The plastic ones just won't be able to give you that nice edge. And if you're planning on using American buttercream and you want to heat your spatula for that really, really smooth surface, then a metal one is a must. A large metal bench scraper is also a must for the same reasons. You will definitely need a fondant smoother to get that fondant super, super nice and smooth because you don't want finger markings in your fondant. A good set of cake tools is also a must have item. If I could go back in time, I think I would go and purchase a metal set. An X-Acto knife or a pen blade is a must, especially when you're cutting out silhouettes or exact replicas of something. A large rolling pin, preferably one without the handles is best for fondant. You will also need a stand mixer of some sort to whip up your buttercream and fillings. It's so much more difficult to stand there with a handheld mixer. You will also need good quality cake pans to actually bake your cakes perfectly through and through. Nothing is worse than mushy cake in the middle. You will also need a selection of piping tips. I like to make sure that I have a star tip, a petal tip, and some sort of writing tip. Of course, you may have to buy more of these as you go along. Tip number six, these are the items I would never purchase or things I never ended up using that I did purchase. 
specialty cake pans. And I'm talking about, you know, a bunny shaped cake pan, a Spider-Man cake pan. You're just not going to use them because you're probably going to end up carving them. Any of those buttercream smoother contraptions that claim that they're going to make your cakes super smooth. Really, the smoothness of buttercream relies on the buttercream that you use itself. A cake leveler. Honestly, using a knife is way easier and way faster. Contraptions based around distributing a product. For example, a candy melts distributor. I just think that you can use a bowl or many other things. I am all about organization, but I find the standard organization systems out there, for example, for piping tips or cookie cutters are just not going to cut it. You are going to have a lot of piping tips and a lot more cookie cutters than any of those caddies claim that they can hold. So it's better just to kind of go to Ikea and stock up on those things. Piping bag holders. Honestly, for me, I change my piping bag so fast and so quickly that I would waste way too much time trying to get it into the holder in the first place. Tip number seven, let's price those cakes properly. I know that this is the hottest topic of the whole video. So a reminder, no negotiations or discounts. So some of you may be looking at the pricing on this cake and think, oh my goodness, $300 for this tiny cake. And honestly, this was made out of a 10 by 10 cake pan, just one level. And you're really not paying for the cake product itself. You're really paying for all the work that goes into this. I've said this before that time is money, but more so than that, skill is also very valuable. The reason that I say this is because I have a friend who is absolutely incredible, but her work does not take her that long anymore. Just because she's quick and efficient though, doesn't mean that she can't charge premium prices. So here are some factors to consider. Are your customers on average genuinely satisfied with your cake product? Or are they more just satisfied because your prices are lower? My really good friend's mom always says, comparison is the thief of joy, but in the cake world, you do need to take a hard critical look at the competition around you. Are you at their level? What is their pricing? Are you a little bit maybe below that level and you're just not quite there yet? When you first start out, your pricing is going to be significantly lower than that of those around you, but you do need to start raising it as you realize what the competition is like. In the baking business world, you find out pretty fast and pretty easily if your product is desirable and if the pricing is within reason. If you have a lot of repeat customers, even after you've raised your prices a bit, then chances are you are doing the right thing. And one final tip. Just because you're getting a lot of orders, if you're not charging properly, you're going to burn out really quickly and you're going to feel like you are not making money. So try to limit your orders, but make sure that they're quality. Tip number eight, you need to have a smooth as silk ordering process. Nail down the details. And I'm talking about every single detail. I'm sure most of you starting out are well aware that we should be asking for flavors and what type of cake and how large should the cake be and what theme is this for. But here is something that took me forever to figure out. You cannot just say, I want a pink cake and leave it at that. You need to make sure that you know exactly what shade of pink your customer is looking for. And if they seem like they are going to be chill with things, that can happen, but it can also happen where they envision something completely different from you. And I've mentioned this in other videos in past. You need to either get an exact picture or you need to get them to sign off on some sort of document that says you are allowed to have the creative freedom because that way you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. Pickup dates and times need to be super clear. Now, because we're at home bakers, you need to make sure that you only give a small window of time. For my lifestyle, I have a lot of things going on. So I needed to only give about a 30 minute window in which they could pick up. So once we agreed upon said time, I said that they could arrive either 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after the pickup time. Anything outside of that window would incur an additional charge. And I really never had to charge anybody because people were fairly respectful of this rule. 
Also, for pickup dates, make sure that you're not asking them their event date. Make sure that you're just getting them for the date that they would like to pick up their cake because sometimes people do want to pick up their cakes in advance. When you're doing a lot of orders, it's really important to get a 50% deposit. For the most part, people want to pick up their cakes, but sometimes it can happen where they don't. Also, make sure not to give any refunds so that 50% is non-refundable no matter what happens. My at-home bakery was very successful because I was always very available. And I'm not talking about the amount of orders that you're able to accommodate. I'm more so talking about your availability online and on the phone. If people can get a hold of you quickly, you're likely to be the one that they're going to ask to make their cake. And this brings me to tip number nine, stay on top of your social media. Now, I am by no means a social media guru, but I do find that consistency is key. So upload often every day and make sure that you interact with your followers. I've always had under a thousand followers, but just making sure that I'm uploading daily gave me that exposure that I needed, especially in my local area. Tip number 10, things I thought I would profit from, but I really didn't wedding fairs they cost a lot of money to be in and you're also giving away a lot of free product and honestly i didn't even get one or two people calling me from those wedding fairs farmers markets since the farmers markets that are around my area are generally based on organic and farmed raised things cake and cupcakes really don't do that well at these things and they're honestly a lot of waste of product Collaborations, and I'm mainly talking about things like photo shoots where people are doing specific photo shoots with a specific theme. I just found that it really didn't give me any exposure and it was just a lot of work. Promotions or sales of any sort. Honestly, this just resulted in a lot of extra work and sure, I did receive more orders, but I didn't really like doing them since I was doing them at half the value. I have seen giveaways and contests work well for a social media boost, but in terms of bringing customers through your door that are actually going to be purchasing cakes, not once did a contest winner actually purchase anything from me. Making items in bulk for local businesses at a discounted rate. I used to sell macarons and cookies to local businesses, but honestly, it was just too much work and I wasn't profiting from it at all. And tip number 11, where I made the most money. It's all in the custom orders. And honestly, it doesn't take a mathematician to figure out why that is the case. One of my cakes on average would sell for around $150 or so for maybe a couple hours of work. So yes, you're outputting product, but once you get good at things and once you've got that technical skill, you're gonna be able to do a lot more custom orders at once and you're going to be able to charge prices that you are worth. This is more of a fun and unexpected way to earn money, but entering local baking contests can be very profitable. Also, making relationships with other local bakers is going to be a beneficial relationship for both of you because I can't tell you the number of times where I wasn't able to complete an order or I just wasn't able to take it on and somebody else did instead and vice versa. So there you have it, all my little secrets and tips and ways for you to make money by making cakes at home and doing what you love. I don't run a home-based bakery anymore. I am focusing more on YouTube and making tutorials. So if you want to know more of my secrets though from my baking business past, then please comment down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so you make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Bye!